The Sabres making a couple moves in free agency to talk about. Ilya Labuskin on the blue line and Eric Comrie in net. We've got that to talk about. Big aggressive moves by not quite division rivals, but some division foes of the Sabres and whether or not we think they'll leapfrog Buffalo in the standings, speaking specifically about Detroit and Ottawa. Plus, we've got some development camp stuff to talk about and also uh, a huge signing around the league that I do not understand and still do not. Johnny Gaudreau. If uh, you can figure it out, all that ahead here on the Lockdown Savers podcast. Your Locked On Sabers, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, everybody, for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, and that includes our YouTube channel. If you want to watch the show, be able to be sure to head over to YouTube, search Locked On Sabres, and uh, you'd be sure to like and subscribe the show as well. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, we've got a lot of Sabres content to get to on today's show after free agency has, for the most part, wrapped up all the big names, most of the big names are off the board. There are some scraps left over that maybe are worth mentioning here at some point on the show. Um, But Ilya Labuskin on the blue line and Eric Comrie in goal. The Sabres have their goaltender and they have their right shot defenseman, the two positions we thought that they were going to grab. And I've got a lot of thoughts on both players, what they mean for the lineup, what they mean for the opening night lineup, and what they mean for the quality of the team going into this season and how much they could help the Sabres take a jump, but also we'll compare the Labuskin and Comrie moves to what some other teams in the Sabres divisions did, in particular Detroit and Ottawa, who made some big swings that the Sabres did not make uh, on free agency day. So that's coming up. Also some development camp stuff and um, Johnny Goudreau. In fact, that's what we're kick off today's show. I do not understand Johnny Goudreau, but that's coming up in just a second. At Sneaky Joe Sports, if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Lockdown Sabres for the Sabres podcast account. And my co-host Jordan Hanskin is at JR Hanskin. If you ever got a mailbag question, be sure to send it along to the podcast account and we will answer it live on the show. Um, yeah, Goudreau. Can, we, can I start with Johnny Goudreau? I know we're locked on Sabres, and you can get plenty more on the Goudreau signing from both the Locked On NHL podcast and the Locked On Blue Jackets podcast, but I've just got to say it. I do not get it. There's never been a signing in sports that I get less because it there, there are usually three or four boxes that a destination has to check to land a star free agent, which Goudreau certainly is. Goudreau is a all-star superstar level player. What are the boxes you got to check to land a superstar player? Well, one would be you're at home. So you already have that comfortability and they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt, the hometown discount that we always hear about. The other type of hometown discount is going home. And Goudreau is from New Jersey. So had he picked the Devils, Everybody would have understood because, oh, he wants to go home. He wants to be near where he's from. By the way, Calgary would have been like defendable. Okay, oh, he just wants to stay in Calgary. He likes what they've built there, comfortable with the organization, would have been understandable. Had Goudreau wanted the money, he would have picked New Jersey or Calgary because reportedly he left more money on the table to not go to New Jersey or Calgary and pick Columbus. Both the Devils and the Flames reportedly were offering north of $10 million a year, and the Flames were offering that on an eight-year contract. Meanwhile, the Blue Jackets on a seven-year contract were offering south of $10 million. So it clearly wasn't the money. And also, lifestyle choice. I guess Goudreau could just be a weird dude that really wants to live in central Ohio for someone that's never lived or is not from central Ohio. But this isn't a guy saying, oh, I'm going to sign with the Rangers. And everybody goes, oh, he just wanted to live in New York. Guy signing with the Kings. And, oh, he wanted to live in L.A. Guy signs with the Panthers. Oh, he wanted to live in South Beach. This is not any of those types of destinations where it's really understandable. It's Columbus, Ohio. And I, I this can sound very critical of Columbus, Ohio. And I've never been to Columbus, Ohio. But 
I'm also from Buffalo, and I get it when people say, why would you go to Buffalo? Typically, the answer is, when the Sabres land guys like that, money. But this is what's so weird about Goudreau going to the Blue Jackets. It's not about money. The other box that's not checked here is the quality of the team. The Flames were a far better team, and the Devils are as defendable as a roster as the Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets are not good. Blue Jackets are going in the wrong direction. I mean, I guess they're going in the right direction now because they got Goudreau. But before Goudreau, they were going in the wrong direction. I mean, they're not a great team. They didn't offer you the most money. They're not in a hotspot city that most guys want to live in. It's not where you're from, and it's not the team that you've built comfortability with. Five boxes. What boxes Columbus check? It, It... It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. Someone explain it to me. Is there a backdoor deal where he gets part ownership? I mean, that would explain it. Uh, He's done a press conference, so I can't use the theory that Yarmo Kekalainen kidnapped Johnny Gaudreau anymore. But, man, it makes zero sense to me. I am flabbergasted, blown away, cannot believe that under these circumstances, that player decided to go to that team. It, It... it is the most confounding, d- dumbfounding uh, is the word I want, dumbfounding move I've ever seen from an athlete. And that might be recency bias. I'm sure there are other crazy moves, but wow, that was so weird. So weird. Uh, so that's what the biggest story around the league has been. There have been a lot of signings uh, around the NHL in the past 24 to 36 hours, um, but that's definitely the biggest one. I wonder, by the way, last thing on Goudreau, any chance Kevin Adams – did not make a call to Johnny Goudreau's agent. It would have been perfectly uh, reasonable to not make a call to Johnny Goudreau's agent, not thinking you had any chance of getting him, not even knowing if you think it's a good idea or not, but mostly not thinking that he's even going to entertain the thought of playing for you. Well, what about now? After Adams saw Goudreau sign with Columbus, did any part of him, and this is if he didn't call on Goudreau, which I don't know, any part of Adams saying, ooh, Man, I wish I called on that. I wish I called. Maybe he would have picked here. Uh, what, what does Columbus have that I don't have? And that is that is a perfectly reasonable question. What do the Blue Jackets have that the Sabres don't have? I mean, I guess attendance last year uh, is the answer. But otherwise, there's not much answer to that question. I wonder if Adams went, oh, man, I could have got Goudreau. It's like in your fantasy football league when you see a terrible trade get done and you go, Oh, why didn't I why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I ask him about Miles Sanders, who he trades for like an eighth round pick? Like, oh, I could I could have done that. That that is what the Goudreau thing was, I imagine, the reaction uh from Kevin Adams. But again, that's assuming they didn't make a call on him, which uh maybe they did. I don't know. Uh development camp is ongoing right now. You can check it out down at Harbor Center. There's a live session on Friday. There is the tournament on Saturday that's open to season ticket holders. Um, and so far it seems like Devin Levi and Eric Portillo have been playing awesome in goal for the Sabres. And maybe Levi has been the star of the show, uh, through two days, but otherwise Matthew Savoy is dealing with an injury. So he's not on the ice shoulder injury, uh, Tobias Leninen, the Sabres second round pick netminder was not present on day two. So he might be dealing with an injury as well. The biggest news I think though, out of development camp so far is, Minnesota defenseman Ryan Johnson, the Sabres' first-round pick, their second first-round pick in 2019, says he is open to signing in Buffalo, and he hasn't decided on what he's doing for this season with the Sabres or going back to Minnesota. And that, to me, is noteworthy. It's interesting to me that he doesn't even know what he's doing for this season. My first thought on that is, is he trying to convince the Sabres to give him an, an NHL spot? for this season, because maybe that's what it comes down to. Maybe Johnson is telling the Sabres, listen, I'm either playing at Minnesota this season or I'm playing in the NHL. I'm not playing in the AHL. I'd rather play at college than play in the AHL. And the Sabres go, well, we're not just going to hand you an NHL roster spot. So now maybe Johnson at development camp is trying to show them, hey, I'm ready for the NHL. And if they come around on that idea, maybe he signs. It's an interesting question. If Johnson told you, I'll sign, but I have to be in the NHL, would you do it if you're the Sabres? I, it's, it's defensible because that's one way to get an asset under contract. 
is to promise him a spot. And honestly, how much worse could he be than a Casey Fitzgerald? Right. And all don't tell me that you're worried about ruining his development by not being in the AHL because who cares about ruining his development? If he's going to leave, if you don't give him the NHL spot, it's it's zero or you take a flyer on him. So I, I wonder if that would get him signed. If they promised him an NHL spot, uh, would he sign and be, you know, like a seventh defenseman in and out of the lineup, maybe playing 17 minutes a night when he's in uh, second power play unit. I, I think that's an interesting idea that I wonder, I wonder if it's on the table, I guess is my question about Ryan Johnson. Um, but anyways, he has not decided on what he's doing. Eric Portillo, Michigan netminder, Sabres third round pick from a couple years back, also says he has not decided on what he's doing. He is a development camp. My guess is, though, he will still leave. And nothing he said, especially the way he sounded the last two days, I, I'm not betting on him uh, being back with the Sabres uh, or signing with the Sabres in general. So that's what's going on at development camp. Uh, coming up next, we'll look at Ilya Labuskin, former Devils, excuse me, former Leafs defenseman and former Coyotes defenseman who signs with the Sabres on a two-year deal. How he fits in the Sabres blue line, what type of player we're looking at, uh, and what I've read and heard about the player in the past 48 hours that has me feeling pretty good about the signing. And then we'll get to Eric Comrie, the new Sabres netminder, who I'm really excited about uh, in the back half of today's show. It's all ahead here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. We're brought to you by betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs uh, and Major League Baseball. Playoffs are done. I don't know why I said that. Uh, BetOnline, though, is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. BetOnline. The- .net, fastest and easiest way to check all your favorite sports events, including MMA, boxing, golf. You've got the Open Championship going on right now. If you want to bet Rory McIlroy to win the Open Championship, go check out the information and decide what to do over at Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jody Biasi, back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. All right, the Sabres add on the blue line. Defenseman Ilya Labuskin, uh, formerly of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, And before that, the Arizona Coyotes. We're talking about a guy that's not going to light up the stat sheet. In fact, if I were going to describe what kind of player he was to you, I probably wouldn't even read the stats off. But just for uh, sake of doing it. Uh, He's played 211 games in the NHL, three goals, 22 assists for 25 points. Last season, 15 points in 77 games played. He averaged 17 minutes and 27 seconds a night for uh, combined between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Arizona Coyotes. Um, Labuskin also played in the playoff series for the Leafs against the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning this past playoffs. And I I thought it was interesting that if you look at his game log from the playoffs, he was playing less than he was in the regular season. So when the Leafs needed to count on guys more than they had been, Labushkin was seeing Labushkin was seeing less ice time than he was in the regular season. In fact, he only topped 15 minutes of ice time once. And that was game six in overtime. Um, and he played 20 minutes in that in that game. So he did not play a lot uh, in the playoffs, and I think that might be a little bit telling of the limitations that we uh, that we'll see here with this player. But he's 28 years old, Russian. He'll be the only Russian player, I believe, on the Sabers roster. We are talking about a tough, rugged defenseman. Big hits. He is going to throw his body around. He is going to stir stuff up. Taylor Hall, remember he, did he get suspended? There was that controversy about whether he should be suspended for sucker punching a guy. He sucker punched Ilya Labushkin because Labushkin rocked him into the walls. He is a tough defenseman. He is going to start stuff uh, on the ice. But he'll also clear out the front of the net. And he is not so pitiful in the transition game and skating ability. In fact, I think he's a pretty decent skater and that allows him to play his game in the NHL in this current, you know, construct of the sport where it's all about speed and skill. His skating is on par and he has the ability to keep up uh, with, with his edge work. So two years, 2.75 million, two year deal. Who cares? 2.75 million. Who cares? They're 30 million under the cap. This is fine. This is just fine. You know, replaces Mark Pesic. And Pesic was even a healthy scratch at times last year. So good. 
no big problem. He'll probably play 18 to 19 minutes a night. Maybe he's the second pair right shot guy along with uh, Owen Power or or Matias Samuelson. Um, or he's on the third pair. Third pair with, you know, Jacob Bryson. Uh, but a depth defenseman, a guy that is, you know, reliable in, in different ways. Penalty kill, block shots, just the defensive defenseman uh, and the veteran defenseman on a blue line that is has a lot of kids and a lot of skill and a lot of talent. I can afford one of those guys, right? I can afford one guy like Labushkin who can be my tough nose defenseman. And the perfect thing about him is, you know, I always – don't get me wrong. I used to criticize Rasmus Ristolainen because – it was all about hitting and all about the tough uh, grittiness that he was. He was getting paid big money and he was playing 25 minutes a night. You give me Labushkin's skill set making 2.75 million and playing on the second or third pair, playing 18 minutes a night, 19 minutes a night, tops. Perfect. That's exactly what that skill set should be doing on a current NHL roster. You can have a guy like that on your team, but you cannot overplay him. And I think Labushkin is the perfect caliber defenseman to give this, that type of skill set uh, to the Buffalo Sabres. So that's what they did on the blue line. What about what the Sabres did in goal? We'll talk about Eric Comrie in just a matter of minutes here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. But before we do that, I want to remind you that we are brought to you by Rock Auto. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend up to 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership. For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store and $216 from Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Prices are reliably low for every customer. Uh, go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Jody Biasi back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. We talked about Ilya Labushkin. Uh, we talked about Johnny Goudreau and uh, kind of what's going on around the league. Now let's get to Eric Comrie, Sabres def- uh, goaltender now that they signed on a two-year deal from the Winnipeg Jets. $1.8 million is the cap hit. That is so low, and it is the perfect idea, I think, for where the Sabres ended up um, at this point in the offseason when most of the better ideas in goal we're long gone. Vili Huso got traded. Vitek Venacek got traded. Uh, Darcy Kemper and Jack Campbell got signed. Like most of the better ideas in net got taken. And you were left with veteran old backups that are just clinging to the, the final uh, gasps of their career. Like Yaroslav Halak, who signed with the, the Rangers. Or Thomas Grice, who signed with the St. Louis Blues. What the Sabres did. They chose a guy who's only 27 years old and has only played 28 games in the NHL. And you might say, oh, 28 games in the NHL, how am I supposed to count on this guy? But what 28 games in the NHL means to me is there is an unknown factor with Eric Comrie. And there is a a ceiling that is unexplored. We don't quite know how good he is yet at the NHL level. The AHL was a little turbulent for him. He had a long AHL career for the Manitoba Moose before finally breaking through as Winnipeg's backup goaltender to Connor Hellebuck last season. Uh, Second round pick in 2013, so it's been a long road for him to get to the NHL level, but goalies take a long time. I made this point earlier in the week that Ryan Miller didn't become the full-time Sabre starter until he was 26 years old. Uh, Linus Allmark didn't arrive in the NHL as a full-timer until he was 25 years old. Um, Cal Peterson, former Sabre prospect, didn't arrive with Kings as a full-timer until he was 26 years old. Comrie showed up in the NHL as a 26-year-old. Sometimes it takes goalies a long time, and maybe that is just the case for Eric Comrie. And the Jets are probably kicking themselves. They let him walk because... They only needed to play him 90 more minutes of ice time so to get him to become an RFA. But they didn't play him enough because they just they overused Connor Hellebuck all season. Hellebuck played the most games in the league, and Comrie didn't meet a certain threshold, so he became an unrestricted free agent, which is why he became available to the Sabres. And he chose the Sabres. I think it's a smart decision on his part because this is where you're going to get the most starts, where you're going to get the most games. And it's the smartest decision by the Sabres because 
You got Craig Anderson. You've already got an over the hill, you know, veteran backup that is a, a quote unquote reliable. Um, and you've got Luka in the system who you don't want to rush. Why not try a guy on that has a bit of upside and a capability of uh, of something higher? You know, his best season is better than Craig Anderson's best season. We know the limits of Craig Anderson at 41 years old. We don't know the limits of Eric Comrie. The only thing we know about Eric Comrie is in his first season in the NHL, he's played, you know, a game or two uh, almost every season, actually, before this past season. He played, what, nine games in the NHL through in five seasons before this, this past year. This past year, 19 games. That's the sample size. That is the sample size to look at because it was the first time as an NHL regular. What did Comrie do in that time? Well, he had a 920 save percentage, which was the sixth best save percentage in the NHL amongst goalies that played 15 games. He had a quality start percentage of 62.5%. That was one of the best marks in the NHL. Uh, 10 of his 16 starts were quote unquote quality starts, according to um, the threshold set by hockey reference. Now, he also, this is. There's a couple of there's a lot of metrics that that make Comrie look really good. Uh, goal saved above expected. He ranked 14th in the NHL out of 65 goalies that qualified. Craig Anderson and Dustin Tokarski, for example, the Sabres goalies from last year, both ranked in the 50s. Comrie was 14th, and the stat he ranked in the best save percentage at five on five, five on five save percentage last season. Eric Comrie was number one, numero uno, in the entire NHL. Ilya Sorokin was number two. Uh, Igor Shesterkin was number three. We're talking about the stars of the sport coming in behind Eric Comrie. He was number one. He was first, ahead of everybody else. So there's a lot of numbers that back up that this guy was really good last season. And in terms of play on the ice last season, there's nobody the Sabres could have done better or sign that was better. The only question is sample size. Can he do that over the course of, you know, 40 to 50 games? I don't really know what the right number is for him. I feel like somewhere between 40 and 50 games is the right number. You get, you know, Craig Anderson, 25 games, and you get Lukanen up here at some point playing 15 to 20 games uh, as well. But I think it's probably unreasonable to expect, you know, if I just say the question, if he does, or the sentence, if he does what he did last season, but doing it over the course of 45 games, I mean, he's a Vesna candidate. I'm not expecting that. If he's number one in the league in five-on-five save percentage, sure, I'd take that. That's not probably reasonable to expect. But can I get a guy that's top 15? You know, he has to be number one, but can I get top 15? Can I get a guy that's at least league average? That's what I would be hoping for out of Eric Comrie. Give me a league average goaltender, but again, maybe you should be a little bit open to the idea that there is uh, more in there uh, with this guy. Uh, technically sound is the story on Comrie. He's not huge. He's average size, 6'1", 180, but it's a lot about technique, his side-to-side -side movement, uh, not the most athletic goalie in the world. Again, it's a lot of technical uh, aspects to his game that kind of make him uh, the player that he is. So I like the signing a lot. I like the signing a lot more than a lot of the other ideas that were out there. Cam Talbot maybe would have been one that I liked a little bit more that Ottawa ended up doing, but I could count on one hand the amount of goalie ideas that I liked more than Eric Comrie. He, I got talked into it. Chad Dedeminisis was like the first guy that I really heard uh, making a strong campaign for Comrie to be the guy for the Sabres. And, uh, well, Chad got his guy, and I think Sabre fans um, should, be, should be happy with where they landed. Uh, in goal cheap too, right? Like it's perfect. It's exactly what Kevin Adams wanted. He didn't want to block Lukanen, didn't want to block Devin Levi and a two year deal is, uh, is perfect for that. All right. Housekeeping at the end here. We did not talk about Victor Olofsson. Um, we'll have time to talk more about him. I, I think that's kind of more housekeeping stuff anyway. Two-year deal, $4.75 million. Uh, about what we expected. Nothing really crazy going on there. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, th th there's depth signings the Sabres made that should not be players that play in the NHL. More signings for the uh, the Rochester Americans. Kel Clegg is the only one I, worth mentioning to me out of that group. Uh, defenseman for the Montreal Canadiens last season. Um, he played, what, 28 games, I think is the number for Montreal last season. 25 games for Montreal. Actually, excuse me, 
He played 25 for Montreal, but he also played 11 for the Kings. So he played 36 games in the NHL last season. Uh, 10 points. Um, so better than Labuskin, I guess, in terms of offense. Played 16 minutes a night. But I would – two-way contract, so I would expect him to be an AHL guy. Maybe he gets a call up at one point during the season to play a couple games, but AHL guy. Uh, and that's most of what the rest of it was for the Sabres. Players remaining. Maybe we'll, t- we'll talk more about some of the players remaining on our next show. P.K. Subban is still a free agent. Not sure he still fits, but he's still available. Um, Nazem Kadri is still available. John Klingberg. Those ideas are probably a little rich for the Sabres' blood at this point. Um, Phil Kessel is still available as well. We'll, we'll pick over what's left in free agency uh, on our next show. So that'll be ahead. Uh, development camp recap of what happens on the tournament. Uh, the the uh, development camp uh, prospects tournament they're having on Saturday at Harbor Center. I'm look, looking forward to watching that with all the star prospects the Sabres have. And um, all that will be coming up on our next show. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at Sticky Joe Sports. Jordan's at JR Hanskin. And the podcast account at Locked on Sabres. Be sure to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, we've been grinding it out on YouTube, uh, trying to get our channel going, and uh, I think I think we're uh, we're getting there. Um, so thanks everybody for listening, and we will talk to you next time here on the Locked On Sabers podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now we're gonna make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On experts giving you a daily thirty minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily thirty minute NHL podcast.